S&P analysts have outlined that a couple of diff a couple of percent increase to New Zealand sovereign debt levels wouldn't make an impact on their credit analysis of New Zealand. I was just wondering, in line with what you were saying about the budget responsibilities, why don't you increase debt levels to cover the infrastructure deficits? That we're oh, look, we believe that we've got the resources to, to begin to undo the infrastructure deficits that have been left to us. Uh, the budget responsibility rules are something we campaigned on. Uh, we think they're an important part of showing to New Zealanders that we can be responsible with our finances while at the same time uh, making the spending and the investments that are, are necessary and we believe that we have uh, significant resources available to us at this budget to do that. But if you can increase debt without having any impact on our credit rating which means we can borrow at still quite a low rate, I mean why not do it? That's only one factor, I mean this is also about New Zealand's ability to withstand uh, long term and large external shocks and indeed internal ones from things like earthquakes so there's a number of factors there. I do note that some of the commentators, not, not standard and pause, but some other commentators who are now questioning the budget responsibility rules would be the same people who would be saying that if we didn't have some kind of debt target like that, that we weren't being prudent. Uh, we believe we've got the balance about right. But if the government's saying things like it can't afford some of the things that it was saying that it could have done in the budget because it has to do some of these infrastructure deficits, then wouldn't it make more sense at a basic level if you can borrow more to do that to cover some of the funding? It's a balance. We believe that we will, over the term of this government, be able to meet the commitments that we've made. What we're talking about here is priorities, what we're talking about here is the way in which we go about that. All of that you'll be able to see on the 17th of May. James Shore has said that basically there's a provision within the budget responsibility rules that say that you have to reassess that before the next election. Given what you know now, is there any scope to be able to change the, no, the look, th Those rules were something that the government has agreed for this term of government. What Mr Shaw was saying is that what happens under any future government is, is up to that government. But given what you know now, looking forward into the future, is there scope to increase that debt level? As I just said to you before, I'm absolutely confident that we've got the ability in this budget and the following two budgets to be able to make a massive difference to meeting the infrastructure deficits that we've been left. So you're not going to break those responsibilities? Uh, budget responsibilities? No, 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 we've campaigned on those. We went to the election on those. Uh, they're about setting the balance between making sure that we're prudent with the, the taxpayers' money, but also make the investments that we need to make. We believe we've got that balance about right, and you'll see in the budget in May the investments that we're going to make. James Shaw also indicated that the other part of the budget responsibility was keeping spending within 30% of GDP. Um, there was about 1.5% room either way, which is about $4 billion. Are you going to be using that money to address these Well, you'll be able to see at budget time where that gets to, but obviously all of the, the rules fit together. So in terms of how much you spend, that has an effect on, on debt, that has an effect on surplus and on debt. So you can't take one of them in isolation from the others.